All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So, look, as Jets fans here, we all know the probability of moving on from Sam Darnold at the end of the season is extremely high, okay, especially if the Jets land that number one overall pick. So in this one, I wanted to dive in and talk a little bit about a couple teams that, quite frankly, I've had my eye on, right? I've been looking at the quarterback position, not just this year, but long term, looking at contracts, looking at their current rosters. And I got to be honest, I feel like these four teams are the perfect fit for Sam Darnold, okay, four trade spots for trade destinations for Sam not only that would benefit him right would be putting Sam in a you know beneficial place but they're also realistic so there is a common theme with all four of these teams right they're all in the NFC and then they all have some sort of quarterback option for 2021 so Sam would be walking into a situation where he can sit and, and you know mature for a year as opposed to him walking into a team and them saying Sam, you better save the franchise right now. If you're not saving the franchise this year, we're just going to release you. Okay, um, so let's get into it. So the first team on the list is the Minnesota Vikings, right? First thing that pops into my head when I think about the Vikings is Kirk Cousins, right? Now, Kirk Cousins is obviously not horrible, right? He's not some bottom feeder in the, in the league, but at the same time, he's not top three. He is not top five. He is not top 10. He's average. He, he might be a little bit above average, okay? But here's, here's the issue that I have with Cousins, because at times he can play good football. Right, look at the Vikings now. They've they've won a couple games. You know, they're back into the hunt of the playoff mix. All right. So you have to give credit where it's due. But long term, when you're looking at cousins, when you're looking at the contract, it's a mess. Do the Vikings really want to be married? Do the Vikings fans really want to be married to Kirk Cousins, who's getting paid over $30 million in 2021, and that number's going up in 2022? At times I feel like Cousins can hold the offense back. You look at the roster right now, I know Anthony Barr's on a decent-sized deal, I know uh, Thielen's on a decent-sized deal, who else, Daniil Hunter, like the Vikings, Harrison Smith, like the Vikings have, I feel like, a lot of big contracts on the roster, and they're not winning the division consistently, I feel like... You know, at, at some point, there's got to be some sort of breaking point. I feel like it would be best for the Vikings, who aren't going to be finishing with a top three pick. So they're going to be missing out on the Trevor Lawrences of the world, the Justin Fields, possibly Zach Wilson, uh, Trey Lance. You know, I mean, are they going to opt for a Kyle Trask middle of the first round if they, you know, say make the playoffs and get bounced? Are they going to, you know, are they going to really opt for a Mac Jones? Because, I mean, I'm not I'm not sold on Sean Mannion for the future. At some point, the Vikings are going to have to look at this thing and say, do we really want to continue paying this massive payday for Kirk Cousins? Or we can pick up the phone, call the New York Jets, and dish out a third-round pick for Sam Darnold. He could come in. He has some weapons, right? Justin Jefferson coming onto the scene. Dalvin Cook, obviously. Adam Thielen. He, there's not that immediate pressure to play right away. So I think the Minnesota Vikings makes a lot of sense for Sam, for the Jets, and for you know themselves as a franchise moving forward. So next team on the list, it's the San Francisco 49ers. Okay, when you're looking at the 49ers, right, they have an incredible defense. They have an absolutely fantastic coaching staff, and they have pieces on offense. Right, but I feel like there's this there's one dark cloud just hovering above this franchise. It's the quarterback position. It's the quarterback question mark. Jimmy Garoppolo is getting paid twenty six million dollars. Some games he looks good. Some games he looks putrid. He's always hurt. Nick Mullins isn't the guy moving forward. C.J. Beathard isn't the guy moving forward. They're again they're not picking one, two, three, or four or five. They're probably going to be out of the mix for one of the top three guys. I know there's a lot of talk with. You know the Niner faithful out there about Zach Wilson, and that that's that's awesome. But I think right now the 49ers would have to be in a position to to move up. As crazy as that sounds, okay. So I, I'm looking at San Francisco, and I'm saying to myself, okay, this is a team right now that plays in an extremely tough division: Cardinals, Seahawks, Rams. They might want to get a guy in the building like Sam Darnold, a guy who has potential, a guy who's obviously not a finished product. We might want to go out and get a guy like this as opposed to, you know, drafting a rookie quarterback in Zach Wilson. You know, he's not the first option. He's not the second option and have him try to learn this complicated Kyle Shanahan, you know, West Coast scheme. Let's just trade for Sam Darnold this offseason, get him in the building. He can sit, come in, you know, week eight, week nine. You know, if Jimmy gets hurt again, if he struggles, if they want to part ways with Jimmy Garoppolo, if they want to, you know, because Nick Mullins, I believe, is a restricted free agent. 
if they want to roll into the season with him as the starter, whatever the case may be, Darnold to the 49ers makes a lot of sense because you don't have to pay him, right? And it, it goes back to the same um, argument that I actually didn't mention with the Vikings is that because Cousins, because Garoppolo, they're getting paid so much money, you're instead of investing a first round pick in that first round contract in a guy, you're getting Sam Darnold on the last year of his rookie deal, okay? The way the contract was set up, the Jets have paid Darnold a lot of money already, the majority of it. So I believe Darnold would only be paid a million bucks, okay? By, you know, from for a team like Minnesota, for a team like San Francisco, that's extremely attractive, okay? Extremely attractive. Okay, so team number three is the Carolina Panthers. And frankly, I haven't heard any rumors, any sort of rumblings. I've seen no indication that the Panthers want to move on from Teddy Bridgewater. They want to upgrade or let alone change the position as a whole. And they, I mean, they could be con perfectly content with Bridgewater, and that's fine. You know, he's an accurate guy. He completes a lot of passes. He's a, he's a little mobile, you know, great leader, great in the pocket. Um, I just, you know, when I'm looking at the roster three, four, five, six, seven years down the line, I just don't think that the Panthers have that franchise quarterback. Um, yes, you can make the argument that they, you know, they will be picking anywhere from like pick 10 to pick 15 that early teen range which is like the the sweet spot for guys like trey lance and uh, zach wilson but man you're looking at carolina and, and, and you're looking at the roster it's a it's a young roster this is a young coaching staff kind of everything is kind of you know trending upwards we can go out and snag the best player available you know go out and get a position of need with that first round pick Call the New York Jets before the Niners do, before the Vikings do, before the Colts and the Steelers do. Get on the phone and say, hey, what do you want for Sam Darnold? We'll trade you a third round pick. Our team is filled with rookies. Like, you know, we have a ton of young players. We have a ton of nice building blocks on the defensive side, on the offensive side of the football. Let's reunite Sam Darnold with Robbie Anderson. Let's get him in the building and have him sit for a year, right? Bridgewater's entering year two of his three-year contract. I mean, this is a it's a perfect opportunity for Sam just to come in be the backup quarterback. Bridgewater was in the same quarterback room as Sam Darnold at one point in time, believe it or not. I know that sounds crazy back when Teddy was with the Jets, but man, Sam Darnold can easily slide right into Carolina's locker room, be the backup for a year. If, you know, Bridgewater goes down with an injury, he that's the one thing with Teddy, he's not durable. Okay, so Darnold could see time in that first year with Carolina, but the plan would be he's the long-term answer. Right, They have a great coaching staff, they have a great roster, they know how to draft, and then after acquiring a guy like Sam Darnold, now you can go and use that first round pick on a major position of need moving forward. So last but not least, the fourth team on this list, we're sticking with the NFC South, it's the Atlanta Falcons, okay? Again, Atlanta has a perfect locker room for Sam Darnold. All right, Darnold can easily, easily walk into that locker room, be the backup for a year. He's better than Matt Schaub. Okay, Matt Ryan is 35 years old, getting paid a trillion dollars. Like, Matt Ryan's deal is humongous, all right? Darnold can walk in there, into Atlanta, sit for a year. Okay, they don't have a long-term option. Five years down the line, who's going to be the Falcons quarterback? There was, you know, there was rumors from the fan base that they really wanted, you know, Trevor Lawrence. They wanted Fields, you know, obviously being from Georgia and whatnot. But it's not going to play out that way. They won their fair share of games. Raheem Morris, you know, he's doing a decent job with Atlanta. You know, you have to give credit where it's due. Um, is he going to be the guy moving forward? I don't know. The one thing with Atlanta, there will be a new head coach and there will be a general manager. Once those two positions are solidified, we'll have some sort of an idea on what direction the Falcons are going to be, you know, traveling, you know, which road the Falcons are going to be traveling down as far as rebuilding or, or, you know, contending. But man, you're looking at the Falcons roster. It's stacked. It is absolutely stacked. Okay. I know everybody makes fun of the defense, but man, they have some solid players on D as well. All right. Like we have to be honest. And then on offense, obviously Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, Hayden Hurst, I think is a solid tight end. Like <laughs> with a bunch of first round picks on the O-line, like they have pieces on this Falcon squad where Darnold can easily transition to. They're playing in a dome. Dar there's questions about Darnold's arm strength, you know, playing in these cold weather games, these rainy games. You know, Darnold has a, has a tough time, you know, compete, uh, uh, completing passes downfield. Now you get you know, eight games in Atlanta in the dome. You have the away game in in New Orleans, so that's another guaranteed dome game. I mean, this is a perfect situation where Sam Darnold will get the weapons that he finally, you know, I don't want to say needs, but I mean, 
you look at Sam, the one thing that he's that he has struggled with big time, or the one thing that people always say with Darnold is the Jets failed him and they they failed to give him weapons and and that whole argument. But I mean, you can also flip it and say to yourself, okay, well, Darnold hasn't shown the ability to elevate his teammates, okay? And I think both play into effect. Both are kind of correct. Um, Atlanta, there, there's not that problem. He's literally getting one of the best receivers in all time in Julio Jones. Calvin Ridley right behind him, okay? The Falcons offense is stacked. He can go, he can sit for a year under Matt Ryan. They can move off of him, you know, 2022. And then Darnold will easily, easily slide in as that starting quarterback position with a year on the bench, with a brand new coaching staff, the offense is going to be tailored around him. He's going to have weapons in a dome. Everything is going to be solid. So, I mean, all it would take is pretty much a mid-round pick at this point. Uh, everybody knows that the Jets are going to be moving off of Sam at some point, you know, whether it's, you know, early in the offseason or, you know, during the draft. So his trade value is low, sadly. It, it is low because um, everybody knows they want to get rid of him. But I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I've seen, you know, some people talk about the Bears. Some people bring up the Saints. And, you know, the Saints were going to be on this list. But I figured, you know what, I'll just leave them out. Because it's kind of like a cliche, like an obvious one here. Obviously, Pittsburgh is up there. Indianapolis. Um, I've seen some people talk about Jacksonville. I, I, I don't really think that, ma much, uh, that makes a ton of sense. Same with Washington. So, I think these four all make a lot of sense for not only the teams getting Darnold, it makes sense for Darnold and the Jets themselves. You know, they're getting him out of the NFC. They're not having to worry about it. And they can, you know, recoup a, a third round pick or something like that in return, third or fourth round pick. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And as always, thanks so much for watching and go Jets.